Good morning everybody and welcome to Chrono Play's Old Ass Games. Today we are taking a look at the Bally Home Library Computer, later known as the Bally Professional Arcade, later known as the Bally Computer System, later known as the Bally Astrocade. Yes, it had it was renamed at least three times, at least in my research it was renamed three times. It was sold not as a video game console, not until you know, the Astrocade, uh, possibly the professional arcade, but it was still mostly focused as being sold as a computer, an actual home computer. And it was fairly interesting how they did this. Now, looking at the Bally, this is a Generation 2 console, came out in 1977, the same year as the Apple One, if I remember correctly, and I think I do. Hmm. But it's got the, you know, normal wood finish, like, would be, like, has kind of, it was kind of the, the vibe at the time. I mean, the uh, Fairchild had that kind of style to it. The Atari 2600 had that style to it. Uh, it's got gold trim. What makes this one fairly unique is that it actually has a keypad. This is a, you know, full, like, calculator style keypad. And it was used to control what games were played. There were multiple games per cartridge, but it was also used as an actual like calculator and a keyboard, but we'll get to that here in a second. On the back, it has four controller inputs. We, it only came with two, but it has four controller inputs, and it has the built-in video cable and power cable which still strikes me as a little weird with the console that has a built-in power cable. But it is kind of nice because then you don't have to worry about losing the power cable, and then you don't have to run around looking for, you know, universal adapters and going, okay, what voltage and amperage and wattage does this thing need? I don't know. But it's got a clear top that comes off, and it has built-in slots where you can hold games. Or, in this case... Bali Basic. Yes, it has a programming language. I told you it was sold as a computer. Or you could put the controllers in here for storage. I don't because that tends to, you know, kink up the cables and I don't like doing that. So let's fire this thing up and see what it looks like. As is standard, I have our old 1972 Sony Trinitron TV with its whole what do they call it, pin cushioning problem? Fire you up, have the volume turned down because of the static, and of course you'll see the <laughs> refresh rate, but that'll lighten up once we turn it on. So let's turn it on. Let's turn on the Bali. It's got a power switch in the back, which is standard. And we start out with, you know, it says select game. You can tell I have no cartridge in this thing, so it has built-in stuff. It has gunfight, checkmate, calculator and scribbling all right let's start with gunfight we hit one and it says enter max score so let's give it you know no no back how do i go back clear no clear entry no is there a back button down up no i can't go back Well, I hit enter, so max score is now 100. Whatever. Um, so the Bally controller is actually fairly interesting in my opinion. There is a trigger button on the front. We have a knob to go side to side. As you can might be able to see on the screen, the gun is going up and down as I spin the knob. But it's also a joystick, an eight-way joystick, so we can go diagonally back and forward, up, down, that kind of thing, as we move around. Now, this is a two-player game, so we should be having a second player to control the second character and actually, you know, try to play the game right. But it is kind of like a blend between, you know, a, you know, the old Wild West draw kind of thing, standoff, and pong. And that's because if you shoot... The bullet bounces off of the walls, and it's a little weird. Uh, but if we turn up the volume here, 
And I don't know how loud this is going to be. I don't know how well this is going to show up. And I apologize if the audio is crappy. Uh, the TV's reception isn't that great. Uh, our fine tune knob doesn't work all that well. And it's a little you know, confusing. It's a lot of static while it has its sound card fired up. Let's turn that down. <laughs> but yes, that's what it is. And I can't shoot through. And it's just a weird game, but it shows, hey, there's a... Could I shoot that? No, it's just a thing bouncing back and forth that's in the way. Interesting. Can I move? No, I cannot move any closer than that. Oh, and I'm out of bullets. It's it, You have a six-shooter, so I'm out of bullets, but the other character can shoot. It's just a weird game, and there's a time limit. Well, once you fire anyways. Was there a time limit? I swear I saw a time limit up here. Eh, whatever. But uh, let's reset that, and we'll go to checkmate. So let's two, enter number of games, one, enter... Enter number of players. One. And then this struck me as very strange. Let's turn that down. I don't know how well that's picking up on the microphone, but basically, as you can see, it is uh, Tron. <laughs> In the most basic of sense, it is uh, Tron Light Cycles. It's, uh, 22. The buttons tend to skip, and it's kind of annoying. But I'm car controlling this guy here. Oh, and I might be screwed. Well, that guy's screwed now. <laughs> Oh, and I screwed myself. Now I'm trapped. <laughs> but it is, it's Tron Light Cycles, played like uh, the old snake game from cell phones. Come on, there we go, okay. <laughs> nah, I screwed myself. All right, so definitely an interesting thing. Uh, it's also single player, you can apparently play multiplayer. And why is the game playing itself? I noticed that, like, I'm this character, but the game's playing itself. I'm very confused. Okay, so the game played itself and I won. <laughs> okay, before I get freaked out, I'm just gonna turn that off. And then number four is scribbling. So let's four, number of players. Eh, let's fire up two and let's see what happens. All right, so we have this little blinking dot here. And you probably can't even see. Oh, wow, the, the knob changes the size of the blinking dot. Uh, there are different colors of said blinking dot to indicate which one is the, you know, which controller. Press the trigger button, it's to draw. And you release the trigger button and you can move. So this is slightly better than that uh, scribbling program that was in the Fairchild Channel F, because I couldn't figure out how to move the cursor without, you know, pushing the button. And it seems to be changing colors. Now, a fairly interesting thing about the Bali, uh, from what I can gather anyways, is that it had a very limited palette of colors. Like, it could use a whole bunch of colors, but it couldn't use them all at once. It could have, like, four colors on the screen at once, and that was it. Or eight colors if it tricked it by having four on this side and four different ones on that side. But you couldn't have eight colors in the same place at the same time. 
Now to change colors, it was something weird. What you had to do was use the keypad. Now there's an overlay that goes over top of the buttons to tell you what buttons do what. And it doesn't want to get into position. Hang on. There we go. So they don't seem to be work. Whoa. <laughs> it's changing all these colors, and it's just weird, man. But as you can see, it's not. I don't know what the crap I'm doing. The game is weird, man. But as you can see, it's only got like four colors total. And that's what it's doing right now. It's just adjusting those four colors, and that's all it's doing. Because that's all it can do. It doesn't have the power to do any more. Which is interesting, I'd have to say. Clear. Does it do anything else? No, that's all it does on the on the little thing on the overlay. So let's take you off. And we'll reset. Actually, I should probably turn off. Because we can look at the cartridges next. So let's turn you... Well, let's turn you down. And then turn you off. And put in one of the cartridges. We'll start with the... Sea Wolf and Missile, because that's all it says. It's just Sea Wolf and Missile. It's just those two games. So we put in the cartridge, and it gets put in kind of like the Nintendo, the NES, where you put the cartridge in and then you push it down. Come on, in, down. There we go. Turn you on. And it seems to be slightly glitched. So let's do a full reset. So it seems to like it's got like some kind of non-volatile RAM in the cartridge or something where it's still kind of saving from the previous playthrough. So it's a little weird. But we can see we now have six options. So we have Sea Wolf, we have Missile, Gunfight, Checkmate, Calculator, and Scribbling. So this is the first console I've seen that had built-in games that still allows you to access the built-in games while you have a game in the slot until you get to like uh you know generation seven and eight so like ps3 ps4 level um so let's take a look at sea wolf one enter time all right so now we see we have two little ships here a yellow one and an orange one the yellow one is controlled by spinning the knob on the controller and the orange one is controlled by spinning the knob on the other controller. As far as I can tell, the joystick doesn't do anything. And then what you do is you basically push the button and fire and shoot. And as far as I can tell, the color coding, like you can see the ships up here, that one's yellow, that one's orange. The color coding doesn't make a difference when it comes to the score. If I shoot the orange ones, I get points. If I shoot the yellow ones, I get points. So... The color coding doesn't seem to make any kind of actual difference. So it's not like you don't shoot your allies or anything like that. It's just shoot whatever is above the screen or on top of the screen. So it does strike me as a little strange. That would be a nice uh, game mechanic to have been added if they made it so that like, you lost points by shooting your opponent. But... Yeah, it's strange. And I guess whoever gets the highest score wins. But it doesn't say who got the highest score. It just says game over. So this is, you know, more just for the players. That's that's it. Um, and that's it. That's all there is to that game. So reset. Take a look at Missile 2. Enter time. We'll go 100 again. This is how many seconds to play. And then Missile seems to be pretty much exactly the same as the other game, except it's planes, and you're shooting up at the planes. And everything moves faster. And I can only move to right there. I can't move any farther in the game. So I would assume that the other controller has the same limitation. You can't go yeah, any further past that. So there is obviously a gap where they can't shoot but 
that shouldn't be a problem. And there seems to be no limitation. Now, it's hard for me to see the color difference. It might be easier on the camera. It might be easier for other people to see. But the ships are different colors. It's more of a dark brown looking color, and that's just a black color. And the planes that are flying by are different colors as well, but there also seems to be no limitation on which ones you can shoot. And it just resets itself. So it's the same game with different sprites, which is interesting. I don't understand. So let's turn you off, and then we'll use you as you were advertised Oop. with Bali Basic, which is an interesting thing. You can see that there is an audio video or an audio jack here, like a headphone jack, and there is a light here. Now, what these did is you could plug in a tape deck into here and you could save and load programs from it using an audio interface. And I always find that really interesting. And the light probably indicates when it's writing. Probably, I don't know. Uh, I don't know much about basic, so basic, I'm just going to be randomly poking at things for the most part. Clicky. And we turn it on. And then we see something different. We don't see the standard startup thing. Um, hmm. We see a cursor here. There's actually something over here off the screen, but the TV's picture is shifted this way, and I don't have a horizontal hold or horizontal position knob on the back of the TV. We'd probably have to take it apart to do it. Um, but there is something back there, and I have no idea what it is. But if we push buttons, it actually does things. I don't know what things it's supposed to be doing because I'm supposed to be using the overlay that comes with it. The uh, basic overlay, that guy right there. And yeah, it's definitely an interesting thing. Uh, do we have a clear button? We have a print button. No, that's equals. Erase. Okay, erase actually erases. That's cool. Space is a space. Uh, zero is actually zero. Hmm. Go? No. That's basically run. Pause. Run does nothing. List. No, that's percent. How do I make it do a thing? Erase words. List. Okay. Uh, how do I make it type letters? Uh, I don't know. Words. Uh, step. No, that's not right. Oh, 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 I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Okay, the bottom three buttons control what the each of these buttons do. So the bottom... The one, two, and three bottom buttons at the bottom control which letter above the buttons above them work, does, and the words button, the fourth button, controls you know the actual words themselves. So, uh, where is clear? Let's just erase all that. So if I type in words and I click the print button, it actually says print, and then I'd have to type in the letters individually, so if I want uh, H, so that's the nine, yeah, the nine button, wait, right? Yes, because everything's above the buttons. So, but it's red, so I push the red button, nine, and that gives me H, and then I want E, so that's eight, so it's also red, eight, E, and then L, blue, L, you get the point. It's going to take forever. I can't tell it to print hello. <laughs> Typing on this thing's a pain in the ass. There was an add-on for this thing that I just learned about today, actually, that gave it a full keyboard, gave it more RAM, gave it an actual ROM with a, co a programming language in there, and it gave it expansion ports for, like, a floppy drive and such. It was supposed to be a computer, basically. <laughs> So it's kind of interesting. And I realized, 
that I had done all this. Oop, let's actually take the cartridge out because the contacts never actually released. Turn you back on because I never showed off the calculator, which is not much of a showing off. It's a calculator, but I realized I did gunfight, checkmate, and scribbling. I kind of skipped calculator, so let's go three. And then it's just basically a calculator. 100 plus 200, oh, 2,000 equals, and it gives me 2,100, which is kind of cool. Now, what kind of struck me as a little bit odd, if we do, say, you know, 1 divided by 9 equals, it gives me 1 repeating, but it doesn't round down or round up or anything at the end, which is weird because I'm used to calculators that do round up or down at the end. But if we multiply that by 9, we get 9 repeating because it's not keeping track of the you know, digits after that. So it's not a really, really powerful calculator that actually understands the concepts of you know, fractions with repeating digits when it's decimal and that kind of thing. So I just thought that was kind of interesting, but that's basically it. Um, the box actually shows somebody using this thing as a calculator for homework. It's just weird. So yeah, that is the Bailey computer system, or the Bailey home library computer, or the Bailey professional arcade, or the Bailey um, astrocade, you know, depending on when you pick the thing up. And I will say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game, and have fun.